actually going through the Reds farm system, and I learned uh, I learned more about baseball than uh, and how to play it, how to go about it, um, the right way to do things, how you wear your uniform, you know, your hair. You learned so much you thought you could manage. Yeah. Yeah. Out loud, didn't yeah. <laughs> and boy, did I find out. <laughs> but I can, I'll tell you one thing: the instructional leagues with Ron Plaza and and God rest his soul. Baseball lost a great person. I those meetings at eight o'clock, eight thirty in the morning, when he went over the game the day before, was way beyond the graduate school of baseball. Uh, it was incredible, and I, I, you know, I was glued to everything he said, and he he demanded that. But without that, I still would have been glued to it because he saw things on the field that, and he made you think about it. You know, the, the little things in baseball that make the difference. You get to certain points, and generally there's ability there. You win games by doing the little things, and the Reds were really, really good at that. And little things, you know, if you didn't wear your uniform right, you had a problem. If you didn't have your hair cut, I can remember, and I'm sure Mike can, that, you know, we'd be in double A, and... When Ron Plaza, when Ron, we never knew when Ron Plaza was coming into town, but you knew, I don't know if the sky darkened up, I don't know what happened, but the minute he walked in that stadium, everybody knew it. And it could, he could walk in in the second inning, and the word would go right down through the bullpen, get your socks up, you know, get your pants up. You know, if your hair was a little long, you tried to put it under your cap. Just, you made sure that every little detail was taken care of. And it's not that you did it on a daily basis, because the managers were responsible for that and did a great job with that. But when he got there, it was a whole different. It was a whole different ball game. And he taught. I can remember my first. We were in Billings, Montana, and Ron was running the preseason, you know, to get us ready to play rookie ball. And it was the first workout, and they were doing rundowns. And my second base, there our second baseman, who I played with at Florida State who was a great fundamental player, was we were doing rundowns and he did something that Plaza didn't quite agree with. But Plaza knew that he was probably the most fundamentally sound player on the field. And he knew that if he got on him in front of everybody, that everybody else would fall in line. So sure enough, he did a first day, first time, and pegged it exactly right and, and made it easier from then on for, for the manager to teach the way it should be taught. And little things like that that I didn't realize until years later, he was a master at. He was, he taught baseball as well as it could be taught. And, and you could, if you wanted to learn, you were going to learn. And, you know, just, I can remember an instructional game where <laughs> we were playing Baltimore, and I was hit with a line drive in my chest. I got hit in the back of my calf, and a ball went through my legs in the same inning. <laughs> and I walked off the field, and he used to call me Spanky, and he, he was batting his eyes the way he used to. And he said, Spanky, what are you going to do about that? And I looked, and I said, don't worry about it, right? I'll take care of it. So, you know, and right away the next inning, I moved some guys off the plate, and he never had to say anything. He, he, you know, as soon as he knew that you were going to play the game the right way, he, he would leave you alone, other than making sure the details were taken care of. Um, but if... But if he didn't, you had a major issue. And, you know, he, he, he had more to do with the Reds, I think, in those days than anybody will ever give him credit for. And it's a shame. But he was a master of teaching baseball. you got to have good stuff. <laughs> I mean, when you have the... And some guys can't start. They're just not... It's not in their DNA. And they go down to the bullpen, and they're completely different pitchers. I, you know, I thought, I, and I did both, but I was much more comfortable coming out of the bullpen. I thought my stuff was much better out of the bullpen than it was as a starter. Um, and there's a number of guys that I've watched get converted who were mediocre starters at AAA with good stuff go into the bullpen, and they're, they're guys that are saving games in the World Series uh, and quickly doing it. There's a burnout factor down there that you know you have to be aware of, but you know you, to pitch out of the bullpen, the stuff matters quite a bit, and you like to put a bullpen together with with different types of pitchers. You know, last year we had Upley and, and Clay Rapata, 
and you know they were both. They he, Epley would come in. I never got on the phone and said get Rapata up. It was always get Rapata and Epley up because for a right left situation, and they did a great job for us. And it was nice having you know those kind of specialists with the sidearm deliveries down there because they were so different from everybody else we had. Um, but you know we've added you know you've got Java Chamberlain down there who can have dynamite stuff on given nights. Um, you know you've got Dave Robertson who is similar to Mariano in, in the way he pitches and I think having Mariano around him for his major league career has probably had a, a tremendous impact on him. And you know uh, Boone Logan who's done a great job coming out of the bullpen left-handed. So you know y you really would like to have two left-handers in most cases. Um, Especially when you come out west and see all these left-handed hitters, but uh, you know if you've got right-handers, you get left-handers out, you're okay. And really, at the end of games, you want stuff, and you want pitchability. You can't have walks towards the end of games, and I think that's what sticks out with Mariano as much as anything, and, and some of the other relievers that have great careers. I think what has stuck out to me is they have success because they're different. I think what we've done a lot in this country and not in a good way is we've made pitchers into cookie cutters. This is the standard delivery, this is what works, this is how you should throw the ball. And what looks good delivery wise, nice and smooth and for a hitter it looks good to him too. And that's why you better have really good command and really good stuff if you're going to have that kind of delivery. You know there's not a lot of Nolan Ryans out there with that kind of stuff. And, and, you know, the patented delivery, you know, you don't see the Juan Marichals and the Kofaxes and, you know, obviously the stuff is unprecedented, but the delivery has a lot to do with it. Uh, hitters don't get comfortable. And I think when the Japanese players came over, completely different deliveries. And it worked because of that. And it's one of the things that when I see young pitchers that have little different mechanics, I, I cringe when I hear people talking about we need to change this and that. You need to change it on account of two things if it needs to be changed. One, the guy's going to get hurt if you don't do something. And two, it's not functional where he can repeat it and make pitches with it. Um, but that's it. And a lot of guys, you know, you start, you're talking about deliveries and, you know, you can go into the, the muscle memory, the, uh, the myelin that wraps around the muscle the, for the memory. Uh, that starts at a really young age, and all of a sudden they're going to get to an age of 17, 18 when they've done something a certain way, and we're going to change it because it doesn't look right. Um, that's one of my pet peeves. Um, and like I said, there are reasons behind when you do change things, why you do it, but I think you're better off taking the good part and trying to emphasize that and get them to the point, do little things within it, Together, but the, you know, going back to the question, the Japanese came over and, and the deliveries were different, and I think it made hitters uncomfortable for a long time. And and also, you know, there's a lot of balance in what they do, and they they've trained themselves to pitch a lot, so they're able to repeat things. And you know, there's there's a lot of practice there. It doesn't just happen overnight. Um, and they're very, uh, you know, when I've dealt with the Japanese pitchers, I've dealt with. They're very in tune with what they do, and they're very professional about the way they go about it. And the details of the details don't get lost. You know, they care about the details a lot, and sometimes it can get overboard with it. And, and uh, but mostly, it's it's uh, they're great they're great players to coach, just because of their background and the way they've been trained, and the way they've been coached, and the way they've been taught to listen to coaching. Um, so. You know, it's it's good experience, and, and uh, you know they compete. You know they'll compete, and, and uh, in a lot of cases, they're able to make pitches. And you know, with Corota, he's got four pitches he can throw at any time, uh, at any point, and it makes a difference.